SCP-601, the Twelve, the Cult, a dozen humanoids who live and speak in unison, a group able to absorb literary ideas and concepts, and a group able to turn your average human like you or me into one of them. What are they, and what would their existence mean for the world? Stay tuned as this channel loves bringing you answers. Hello and welcome back to Life's Biggest Questions, a channel that loves a deep dive through the hallowed halls of the SCP Foundation. I'm your host Rebecca Felgate, and today I'm asking, what if SCP-601 was real? Before we get into this video, I want to ask you guys what your favourite SCP is, if you have one. A lot of people are all about SCP-999, the cute sweet orange tickle monster. I hear you, I really do, I think it's cute and everything, but I don't like being tickled. While you're down there leaving a comment, why don't you hit that thumbs up button and share this video with a friend. Stick around to the end where I'll be reading comments from a previous one. So SCP-601, the 12. This is not one but 12 organisms that live and move together, but are still singular entities in themselves. They speak together and think together, they eat together, but through their own mouths. They sleep in separate beds, but all in the same room. They're as close as a group can be, they're closer than the angels of the OA. The group are made up of 12 adults of varying ages, genders and ethnicities. They are all in containment together and under constant surveillance. Their unison is a matter of survival. If one part of SCP-601 moves 5 metres away from the rest, it would drop down dead. It simply cannot be separated. Then a new human is taken in as part of the 12. Usually this is D-class personnel in the SCP Foundation. A new subject is identified and all remaining 11 entities will approach it and turn it into the 12th part of SCP-601 by placing their hands on that person's head. Very strange. Stranger still, the SCP speaks all at the same time, unless sleeping, eating or drinking, which is the only moments that they pause. Dramatic narration of any event happening within a 4 km radius is what they talk about. Now, they converse in a multitude of languages, extinct or current, they switch between them. Also strange is the SCP's relationship with food. The group are not fed any meat. If they are, they create open flames and burn it. Whenever presented with a drink, they'll pour a few sips of it onto the floor before they drink it. Weird. 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 The mystery continues. Of course, this is the SCP Foundation after all. The Foundation notes mention a mysterious experiment named SCP-6010135, which has had its data expunged. Of course. One experiment left in the notes added further intrigue for me. It seems that the SCP was presented with a copy of Alice Through the Looking Glass by Lewis Carroll, and hours later, they were found all wearing red chess piece costumes and speaking in verses from the book. Okay. Listen, I have to say that the theatre girl in me is absolutely here for this. Never mind the whole ability to turn a human into a zombie thing, like 12 is a great number for a stage play and 601 seems primed and prepped to perform. They don't have to learn lines, they absorb them, and they can magically manifest their costumes, which massively saves on budget. Watching 601 would be way more entertaining than Big Brother, or sorry Kim Ye, but also keeping up with the Kardashians. This would be some highbrow theatrical reality TV. Get those surveillance cams live streaming, because I am here for this. One of the show's main sponsors of course would have to be PETA, the people for ethical treatment of animals, because this troupe is meat free Monday all day every day, although I suppose there is some irony there, it isn't exactly ethical to keep 12 people locked in a glass box and live stream them for world entertainment. Something about people in glass houses and stones. And this of course is one glass box that you do not want to breach, it sounds like the SCP Foundation does have a handle on the situation, what with the feeding and containing and everything, and literally, life with SCP-601 as a reality would be fine, so long as they stayed contained. They actually seem pretty content doing their thing in their culty group of 12, but should they break out and start getting separated, well that's when they would start dying and then replacing each other with other unison zombies. Hang on a wee second 
end though. If SCP-601 was real, I would be really worried, not massively because of what they are, but more the potential of what they can do. Right now, 12 is their magic number, but who set that? Where exactly did the SCP come from? The foundation notes suggest that it was inherited from a prior organisation, which to me is sketchy. What if they got on the loose and decided they wanted to expand their cult? They have the power to turn anyone into the part of their SCP squad, so we literally could all be in danger. What if 12 then turned to 1200? What if 1200 turned to 12 million? What if everyone in the planet was taken in as part of SCP-601? What would stop them from turning anyone into performing zombies? I actually have a theory though, so if you're from the SCP Foundation, listen up, or so I would say if they were real. Anyway, my theory is is that the SCP-601 was the creation from the Scarlet King himself. It sounds like the kind of whimsical thing he'd want to do in the pursuit of a little entertainment. I think the purpose of the SCP is to slowly expand and become a theatrical cult, performing at the whim of the king when he's tired of the monotony of his court. He'd probably love to see nothing more than a whole world standing together citing King Lear, or better yet, Macbeth. Drama, drama, the king loves drama. I'm not supposed to say this because I do really value my free will pretty highly, but actually, being part of a theatrical cult that can summon its own costumes and talk in performative unison actually sounds kind of fun. I performed at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival a few times and they were some of the best days of my life. Would you guys want to join the troupe? Let me know in the comments section down below. Also, what play should we do? Just a little side note to end this video for you. When I was researching, I found evidence of another SCP-601 that may have existed before this one. This was very different. It was called the gloam and was found in the sewers of a chemical plant. It was a biohazard, but it was itself poisoned by fresh air. Now that SCP now seems to be long gone, which leads me to question, can they be killed? Is that something that we would want to do? Again, back to the whole ethics thing, and what are the wider implications of eradicating an SCP? Uh, as always, asking questions often leads to even more questions, and such is the circle nature of curiosity. But I love it, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Do let me know if you have any answers though, because I am literally all ears. And don't forget to let me know what your favourite SCP is. Perhaps you got a suggestion for a future video. Let me know in the comments section down below. Also, don't forget to leave a fun up on this video and share it with a friend. Before I go, I'm just going to read some comments from What If SCP-2675 Was Real? That was a nautical nuisance, if you remember. It was like a radioactive ghost ship. Stephen Matthews said, A ghost ship can't exactly hurt you, but the ghost pirates can and will if you get too close. Ah, ghost pirates. But I will say, this ghost ship had ghost nuclear guns that seemed to fire real, real stuff, so I'm kind of worried by it. Corvus Vigil, Slayer of Demons, wrote, I went on a boat and hated every minute of it, so radioactive Soviet naval ship? Yeah, I'd stay on land. You know what? I really don't blame you. We had a worrying comment from Legionnaire. They wrote, Is this non fiction? Because I think I've seen this SCP. Ba ba ba! Oh my god. Goodness, where was it? Have you alerted the nearest foundation outlet? Thoughts. Thoughts. Cans of worms everywhere. Time for me to wrap up this video. It has been a pleasure as always. I am your host, Rebecca Felgate. I'll catch you in the next one. But until then, please do stay curious, stay alert, and never ever stop questioning. <laughs>